All right. Welcome to our uh, session. Uh, we're going to be talking about 5G and smart cities. My name is uh, Janae Islam. Uh, thank you for all of you who are uh, watching this recording on Horasis. Uh, we are a community of volunteers who focus on uh, sp uh, spreading uh, information about uh, technology, both the good uses of technology, but also bad uses of technology. It's one of the things, uh, we're a volunteer group, one of the things that's very important for us is to make sure technology helps people that uh, of all strata, rich and poor, of all parts of the world. Today we're going to be talking about 5G. We've got two uh, experts, uh, Marinella Mirpuri and Antonio Cantal Piedra. Uh, well, uh, sorry, great, <laughs> great pronunciation, yeah, very close to the Spanish accent. Very so, uh, we're, we're uh, I'm gonna ask both of them to actually introduce themselves. Uh, both of them have fantastic backgrounds, and then after a brief introduction, uh, we're gonna go back and, and have a, a great session. And then, hopefully, uh, for those of you who are uh, watching this recording, you'll have a chance to, to get insights from people who are actually hands-on practitioners. So with that, uh, Marinella, if you could just say uh, two minutes about yourself. I, I, I know you, you, you're doing a lot of things, so that could take half an hour, but give us the two-minute uh, overview, and then uh, I'll ask Antonio for the same, uh, and then we'll, we'll have a, a discussion. Thank you very much, uh, Janaid. Uh, and by the way, uh, you should pronounce my name well because it is also an Indian name. Oh, thank so, you. <laughs> Mipuri is Indian origin. Uh, sometimes people are hardly believe that I am half, half Indian, but uh, actually I am. Uh, so introducing myself, well, uh, how can I define uh, I was a businesswoman all my life. And uh, three years ago, I decided to give uh, up of the entrepreneurial world and become a philanthropist. Uh, and I started to give shape to a project that I had started in the beginning of the year 2000, that is the Hera project, and I will be speaking uh, of it uh, later. And uh, I, I could say about myself that I have always loved to do different things. Uh, uh, since I was in my early age, I wanted to, to do social responsibility work. I started very early helping people, helping uh, abandoned animals and uh, doing charity. And so uh, what I decided to do uh, three years ago on becoming a philanthropist is like I say, to give back to society what society gave to me. So I had the opportunity to become a philanthropist as my choice and uh, as a desire to help humanity. And this is what my big project is. And uh, uh, I will uh, uh, talk to you later about it. Thank you very much, Janet. Great, great. And, and Antonio, uh, could you a little bit about yourself? Yeah, well, thank you very much. Um, so I'm, I'm, they say I'm a Syrian entrepreneur because um, I was part of the founding team of My Taxi, so uh, which is, is a mobility company very similar to Uber at some point now. It's uh, free now because we sold the company to Mercedes-Benz and, and, and they are, um, you know, um, um, expanding uh, around the world. Um, and after that, uh, so I'm, I'm the founder of several companies. One of them is, is Booniverse, which is a, a fintech company, uh, travel tax tech fintech company. And we are uh, changing the outdated rules of the tax free for uh, global shoppers. Uh, using technology, but one of the uh, cool things is that we also part of, of uh, we, we have a, a mobile app. It's only mobile, and and uh, all the some part of the of the benefits are going to uh, social uh, responsibility, social causes, you know. And at some point, we are changing the 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 you know the uh, the global shoppers when they come to France, come to Italy, they buy luxurious things and then they can also get some part of the BAT and, and trespass to, uh, you know, for social uh, causes, you know, and, and social responsibility, you know, for, you know, uh, making uh, cities greener and, and, and many other things, you know, education, healthcare, etc. Uh, and also I'm, I'm launching uh, also, um, you know, uh, medical company. So it's kind of a, 
platform uh, and, and uh, we are launching this in Lisbon to uh, also to cover problems of uh, people in Africa. You know, uh, they can access to uh, doctors uh, using technology, using uh, uh, the mobile. Uh, and, and I think it, this, this can be also very good because they have some weird diseases that they don't have uh, hospitals there and they can also access to Portuguese and, and other type of uh, uh, doctors from over the world through the mobile. So, uh, and, and that's uh, my, uh, and also previously I was working for telco companies when BlackBerry was on top. So I'm, 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 I'm really, I, I dedicated all my life to, to smart cities and, 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 uh, and urbanism well, well, and this kind of thing. So that, that's fantastic. I mean, we, we have two great speakers. Uh, we, oh, oh, we had a third. Uh, is this uh, Sergio? Yes, sir. Oh, so, so, uh, so uh, we, we have a third panelist join. Uh, Sergio, our other panelists have introduced themselves, and we have uh, Sergio uh, Cordova. Uh, Sergio, would you want to say uh, something about yourself for a minute, uh, just uh, the 60-second version? Oh, absolutely. Thank you so much. And hello, everybody. Sergio Fernandez de Cordova, and I'm the chairman of P3 Smart City, as well as a public foundation. And we focus on public-private partnerships in the context of smart cities. Uh, we're working on building out municipal infrastructure around uh, 5G and smart cities and programs around, around the world. Great, great. Uh, we also have a lot of uh, uh, important people in the audience <laughs> who I actually am going to uh, ask to speak to. Uh, some of them I know. Uh, I don't know if you know uh, John uh, Douglas Graham. He's actually one of the world's top uh, experts in intellectual property. He's actually in the audience, and he's been focusing a lot on smart cities and intellectual property. But uh, let me start first with uh, Marinella. She's uh, been actually creating a smart city. Uh, uh, with people designed in. Uh, uh, it's, it's a pe people-focused smart city that in integrates everything from 5G to machine learning to sensors, but making sure that the technology serves the people. Marinella, if you could talk a little bit about your project and sure. how you're involving people uh, right in the design of the, the city itself, I, I think that's quite spectacular. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, sure, it, it's always a pleasure to speak about uh, the Hera City. And, uh, but before speaking about Hera City, I have to speak about Hera because it's Hera that makes the project and it's not the project of the city that makes Hera. So one doesn't live with another. And to tell the story about Hera and Hera City, I have to go back 20 years ago when uh, I decided to, to do this and everybody thought, well, she's crazy. She wants to build a city by, from scratch. And uh, I took 20 years to plant the seed so that today I can uh, uh, take uh, the profits uh, of my insistence, let's say, for doing this project. Uh, I, I was, like I said, uh, an entrepreneur. I had always a very busy business life. I was in the, in the aviation uh, business. Uh, I founded and uh, co-founded most of uh, one important uh, companies like NetJets, MasterJet, uh, Air Luxor, uh, and uh, uh, was involved in aviation uh, until uh, uh, five years ago. Uh, and then I decided to give up uh, everything and become a philanthropist, like I, al uh, I already said. But to understand why I did this, we have to go back uh, and think uh, that 20 years ago, I was the only woman in the world that was CEO of an airline company. And that made me think, what is the role of women in this world? And why am I the only woman? Uh, I could do my job very, very good, but uh, I should not be alone. Uh, there should be more women uh, in, the, in the same field. So I have uh, started to to think about how can I empower women? How can I do better so that uh, uh, women have more power or more uh, impact and more presence uh, in this world? And I started to join a group of uh, opinion leaders, let's say, and uh, from all over the world, because one thing that my business gave me was the opportunity of having a huge network, right? 
So I had I I was partner with Warren Buffett. I had the opportunity to 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 be with him uh, sometimes and uh, in the, in uh, in dinners and uh, and other functions. Uh, yeah. And uh, and I was partner with other pe very powerful people in the world, and that gave me a big network of powerful people around me. So I started to use them to do the good. So this is my purpose. Let's do a better world. Let's do a more sustainable world. And sustainability, back in the, the beginning of the 20s, nobody knew what, what was sustainability. Now everybody talks about sustainability, but some people don't even know what they are talking about. So for me, it was very uh, important to, to, to see how can we, we impact the world in a better way, and especially uh, the women. And uh, I started to, to do work, and uh, I did some work in India uh, that was recognized in 2019. I have received the medal of the city of Mumbai because of the work we did uh, in the state of Maharashtra. Uh, just to give you an, an example, uh, and through, we had, uh, we had, no, we have uh, a bus going uh, uh, around the streets of Mumbai from six in the evening to six in the morning to transport women so that they are not raped, to avoid them to, to be raped and things like that. I mean, I'm not talking about the, the, the action we do all over the world, but we impact many lives and many uh, people, and especially many women throughout the years in India, in Africa, in Brazil, in, in Panama, in uh, in uh, in Asia, well, in Europe, of course, uh, and in Portugal. So uh, in uh, 2019, because of the before 2019, in 2018, I have decided to do my NGO. So until until then, it was an informal project, an informal movement. Uh, that was working for the good, but then in an informal way. And then I decided to create HERA Association. This is an NGO. It is based in Portugal, but we are all over the world. We act globally, and as an international network, we are over 10 million people. Uh, we are present in all continents, and uh, what we do is to, uh, to promote a macro uh, purpose and the macro brand so that we can afterwards uh, help the micro projects. So when I talk about HERA, we communicate in a bigger way, in a, a macro way, so that we can become the umbrella of many institutions, organizations, associations, uh, foundations that can st be with us and then uh, 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 do the difference. And why do we do all this? Because we are going to have this city. And that's, uh, if you want uh, the other uh, fellows to, to speak a little bit, and then I speak again about Harrow City, uh, that's up to you tonight. I don't want to. <laughs> to yeah, uh, so, so, so <laughs> why don't you uh, talk a little bit about the city, on how you're integrating technology to serve the people, and then okay. I'll pass the mic to Antonio oh. and to Sergio. The purpose of the uh, of, uh, HERA project and the ultimate goal is to build this city because I be strongly believe that only by having a physical place that shows how the, 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 the future of humanity can be, we can achieve the difference in this world, okay? And we can make the change. And why am I basing this project on the woman? because it is an inclusive project. Of course, the city is, is open to everyone for all genders, all religions, uh, everyone. But uh, it is uh, based uh, in the woman because the woman, in my perspective, she gives birth to humanity. And if we succeed to educate the woman, we succeed to educate humanity because the woman is on top of the, the, the humanity. So just to give a, a, a simple example, if uh, the, we all know what uh, the Taliban and other uh, extremists' uh, uh, behavior is towards women, if they have been educated by educated women, they would perhaps have a different uh, uh, behavior. So 
we believe that we have to educate the woman and uh, we have to create this city more than ever. Uh, and this city is going to be uh, built. We have a land already, 10,000 hectares uh, offered from a, a government. And uh, we intend to put the first stone still the, uh, this year. Let's see if the, this problem of war and so on doesn't, pre be, before it was COVID, now it's the war in Europe. Uh, and uh, sometimes the projects are uh, delayed. But the city will be a city for the future of humanity. If we want to have a future, we have to respect the planet where we live, okay? So, and if we want to have humanity, we have to respect the human rights, the human being, and, the, and also the women's rights. So that's why I say the Hero City is going to be the city for the future of humanity, because it is a visit card for what can be the future, a better future, Having all the technology, and I'm now I'm going to speak about the technology and how technology can impact the lives of the people. Uh, we respect and we accept the technology as long as it serves the human being. Okay, so we are open to, to everything because we are building a city from scratch, so we are open to, 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 to receive all technology as long as it is for the good and for the sake of the human being. Great, I mean, thank you for that. And so, uh, Antonia, I want to pass the virtual mic to you. Uh, Marinella has uh, really given us a big vision. Uh, she's also the most impressive person I know, so I'm gonna start telling everybody I know her since uh, she just says she knows all these powerful people. Uh, so I can now say I know somebody who knows somebody. Uh, but with that, uh, Antonio, I, I know you've done a lot of work in finance, uh, a lot of work on making different uh, e-commerce services available. Definitely a, a big part of the smart city is the smart economy. And would love your perspective on how do we make sure these smart cities include all stakeholders, rich and poor, uh, on an open platform. Yeah, that, that, that's the theme for sure. 5G infrastructure is absolutely crucial for, for the smart city concept for this um, digitization and the digital transformation. Uh, we need that also, even, even beyond that, probably 6, 6G, in which uh, many countries are working on. Um, why? For instance, we need that for payments, for digital payments, which are uh, in many areas of, 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 of this world, uh, the digital payments are empowering not only women, also the, the underserved, the people in Africa, in Asia, uh, or in Latin America, or in other places, unable to access to banks, unable to access to a credit card, etc. And they are using the mobile phones, smartphones to make payments using QR codes and many other things. Um, so it's necessary. My concern is when we talk about the smart cities, etc. The problem is not technology; is not the problem. The thing is, uh, you know, the, the the governments, the regulations, the people without vision, or it's about investments. My concern is uh, is one one, especially one is how um, is going to be the monetization of this five five G when when countries are planning to deploy this technology. Because I think um, tech companies are satisfied with, with the technology operators as well. But the thing is, uh, if they don't perceive, uh, they, uh, they can monetize, um, meter speaking at least, this technology, the deployment of this technology, probably they're going to be focusing on some areas and stopping the commoditization of this, of this uh, technology, which is bad probably not for people in North America or in Europe or in, in uh, rich countries, wealthy countries, but it's a problem for other places because then we're going to come up with uh, two uh, different uh, social classes, the info-rich and the info-poor people, unable to, be, uh, to, to, to have this connectivity. So, and that's my concern. And, and also another concern, it's, it's a minor concern, 
uh, in comparison to these, you know, it has to do with the disparity of wealth. It's also, the 5G is also about geopolitics. So in China, it seems out China is winning this, this uh, race at some point of China or Huawei or, but the thing is that probably we're going to see two standards of 5G, the Chinese one and the Western civilization one. And I don't want that to create, uh, again, more disparity of wealth or difficulties in the access of, uh, you know, poor people or the underserved people. And it's a real problem, the monetization, especially now in this juncture with the, with the uh, high level of inflation, uh, the, 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 the coming recession. Hopefully I'm, I'm wrong, but the, the, the recession is coming at least uh, for, for one or two years. And, and, and if, uh, if uh, in the end, probably tech companies or operators are going to, you know, stop that commoditization and, and, and that, that's a problem. Um, but let, let's see, let's see. Uh, I only want to point out this kind of uh, problems, especially when, because I think also uh, technology is key to empower yeah. women, not only women, all, all, you know, in general, all the people, the underserved people, I, I really like to, 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 to tell this, this, this name, uh, women or, or, or men. Um, so we need to really work on putting technology at the service of societies, all societies. And, and that's going to change completely lives in, 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 in cities because we're able, if, uh, if we use especially the 5G, I really believe in, in, the, in the autonomous cars. I think it's going to be key to cut down on pollution, cut down on noise, cut down on, 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 on traffic jam, cut down on people lining up in airports, in many things. When we talk about, uh, you know, the life as a service uh, um, platforms. And that's, that's, the, that's the thing that we need to solve a lot of things about the pricing, uh, the, the B2C pricing to really move forward with this. So, Ser Sergio, you've seen Marinella really talk about creating, designing cities that are inclusive of, of women right at the design level. Uh, I, 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 after hearing her talk, you know, she kind of pointed out, you know, when we started the session, it says, says Janet, are you an engineer? You know, it's, 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 it's all the smart technology, a bunch of guys doing engineering. And I thought about that. Maybe she's right. So so uh, definitely a design flaw, having smart cities only designed by men, uh, probably lots of video games everywhere, completely useless. But, you know, she's talked about having a human centric approach to design. Uh, we've got Antonio, who's really talked about making sure the economic si system, the payment system is open to all stakeholders, uh, rich and poor uh, people, not just buying, but people. Uh, given your background in this area, what kind of insights would you want to share on what's the right way to design uh, a smart city with 5G technology and other uh, other systems working together? I mean, how do we make sure they serve people and that people aren't really controlled by them? And I think uh, Antonio also touched on the important issue, which is a sensitive one, is the difference in uh, system design between China and Europe and the United States, where, you know, China uh, is really about managed cities, which, you know, opens for abuse where we have a different view. But Sergio, would, would love your thoughts on this. There we go. Thank you so much, uh, Janaid. Uh, I appreciate that. And uh, um, I think, you know, from my perspective, I think I can't probably bring a, a completely different uh, perspective on, on, on what we said here so far. And thank you for the recap there. A lot of the work that we do, you know, we kind of operate in the private sector and in the public sector. I'm a big believer in policy, data is a human rights and connectivity for all. While at the same time, we understand the challenges and the issues that exist and sort of building out the infrastructure. Um, you know, from perspective of a lot of the work that we do, and why we wear the name P3 in our, uh, and, and everything that we do is public private partnerships. When we look at how we're going to scale this conversation, how we're going to take it, you know, there is a lot of talk happening, but there's not a lot of doing because people don't know how to actually structure public private partnerships. How do you bring a mechanism that allows something to scale? How do you bring intellectual property and allow it to exist and replicate? How do you actually create long term uh, partnerships that you know, sort of help guide governments through their smart city transformation? 
right? And where 5G and what's so exciting about 5G is it gives us the ability to start connecting more, put more connectivity to the streets, right? And we need more infrastructure for that, right? We, we need light poles, we need electricity poles. But also at the same time, you know, we go by what we call a C model, which is basically social, environmental, and economic impact, right? So basically we want to make sure that in the, in the social aspect of it, that the urban experience, right, is, is providing residents with a seamless connectivity, right, but with better access to information, right, with more efficient resources and management and the everyday things that actually make a city go, right? When you talk about, yes, 5G, China's doing this, Australia's doing X, Japan is doing, et cetera, the Africans are still trying to figure it out, and in Latin America, they're only starting to roll out. But really, at the end of the day, is it a telco game? Is it a policy game? Or is it really, uh, you know, focused on the social element, right? There's a lot of sort of pieces. And if you look at it from a hub and spoke model, there's all the different stakeholders that, you know, can actually benefit from it, right? <clears throat> the other element in a, in a C model is environmental. We say, hey, you know, we want to help cities minimize their carbon footprint and provide a healthier environment through this sort of energy efficient. So, for example, some of the work that we're doing right now is we're working with the Department of Energy on how they're rolling out their investments across cities that are make sure that we're not adding more infrastructure, not, you know, creating environmental and urban blight. Rather saying, hey, if we're going to put a charging station and put a kiosk, let's have a charging element to it. Let's have the solar. Let's have make it energy efficient, renewable. Let's put a 5G antenna inside of it and or make sure that we're running fiber core and this becomes an opportunity to sort of, you know, create or, or promote on the, on the Wi-Fi side and any economic and making sure that everything that we're looking at is sort of provide that sort of as, as you know, was just mentioned before, um, you know, with what Antonio was saying is that, you know, you need that sort of economic uh, element as well. And, you know, you want to make sure that you're improving the economic urban environment. How can other businesses start, right? How can we know? And, and I, I think, you, you know, you, Marianela was saying, which is what I was saying, was sort of, you know, if we're not opening the door and providing, you know, making sure that women have an opportunity to be part of this economy, that it's not just, you know, the boys club, right? And I think in every city, that sort of gender balance, and it starts at the city level, it starts in each one of these projects, can't just overlook a 5G as a whole, but rather actually, you know, making sure that that DNA and, and some of the, the work that others are doing is being implemented or at least being looked at and saying, okay, how can we grab that intellectual property and land it in our own backyard, in our city, in our project, in an opportunity? But go ahead. You were going to jump no, in. No, I, no, I, I was just going to say your perspective is fantastic. And really, with the three of you, you've really laid out a, a fantastic uh, holistic view where Marinello talked about the, the vision and, you know, uh, Antonio really talked about the economy and the payment system. And what you really brought up is really sustainability through the public partner, private partnership that these things are living and have to live for 40 years, a hundred years. Right. And it's, it, it is only through the partnership between uh, public entities, municipalities, cities, local governments and businesses. Someone has to, you know, uh, offer services and be dynamic, you know, someone has to hire people. And, and so I actually think the perspectives. Yeah, but, um, but it's also, I, I just want to correct because I think it, it's very important to, to on what you said, it's about the infrastructure and a policy around it. Government today, including when you look at this infrastructure bill, they're out there just pushing more money at bad problems and bad ideas. And, and so if we're not looking at smart city building and building smart cities for actual evolution, Mm -hmm. And all we're doing is just wasting taxpayers' dollars or, or just, you know, pushing agendas that have no core sort of uh, rudimentary focus on where the future is going rather than, hey, I just want to sell products. Right. I sat on a board of Dell. And all they wanted to do was just sell more screens in smart city space. All Oracle wants to do is sell more software or, you know, every single one of these people that are pushing the conversation. So it's really left to the projects and folks that are building out these projects and the public private partnerships that actually build into that right where that future is going to me what's exciting about 5g is to be honest with you it's not 5g right 5g is the signals that were broadcast it'll broadcast in all directions right like 4g right but it gives you smaller base stations to extend the reach and handle some of the exchanges directly onto the ground and therefore moving more signal because you have more devices in between each other 
right? But, you know, in the next five years, less than five years, we're going to start to hear about 6G and 7G, which is already in route, right? So, you know, 5G is not the end all, but yet a lot of folks are, are, are going into 5G like this is it. It's at that we're done. No, we're just getting started. So if we're not building 5G to be ready for 7G, right, then it, it, it's an absolute political, not pol- politics, but, but you know, a, a policy-focused disaster, yeah. right? And, 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 and we're watching this. I mean, we work with over 90 countries. We do a lot of work with the UN. And a lot of these folks are just selling out to the Googles. They're selling out to whoever brings a product free. And rather than focus on what that evolution can do and how you could actually evolve community, so, people, yeah. and environment and economy. So, so Marinella, you, you had a comment. And uh, for the uh, our audience members, we actually have experts. I believe if you click the uh, mic button, uh, you can actually speak. Uh, sure. Marta, would, would you kind of uh, build on uh, kind of Sergio and Antonio's comments? Yes, uh, on, uh, especially on the Sergio comment first, and then I will go back to Antonio. Uh, Sergio, you, you you talked about infrastructures, okay? It's uh, very important to to talk about infrastructures in, in a city and in the in the technology. Of course, we are now in the five G, six G, seven G because technology is moving. That's that's the the way technology goes. Doesn't stop. It's always improved. It always continues. So we have to know exactly what is behind technology. And when you talk about the doing the infrastructures in a city or as I'm building a city from scratch, creating the infrastructures that enable the, the project to really serve the, 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 the planet and the humanity and, and really make the difference, we have to think about one, what is behind the technology and what is behind everything that we want to achieve with all this uh, 5G and the, the, the others to come. So we have to think that in terms of uh, uh, the position, and I'm uh, sorry, but uh, my project is inclusive, but I have always to to remember that we are in the 21st century. And if we have as a sustainability goal, the gender parity, it says everything. It's because there is still much to do in that field. And uh, I think that uh, if you don't change something from that, if you don't think about building cities or thinking about technology, also thinking about on what is behind that technology, who are the people who, that are using that technology and, and what is that for? It's, uh, it's very important to not despise the, the, the philosophical aspect of uh, every, in, in everything that we do. And uh, not talking uh, about philosophy, because uh, when you build a city, you don't have only to worry about the social aspect, but of course about the economics, because you cannot build a project if you don't have uh, a business plan or the economics are not there, or the technology is not productive or not uh, uh, useful. Uh, you have to think in a macro way so that we have, you have to have a macro vision on everything. So I think that uh, what I want to, to say is that technology is always welcome and we cannot stop technology. It's, uh, it's impossible. We are now in the, in the 5G and we are already uh, going to the 6G uh, sooner than we think. And, uh, but what we have to do and building this Hera city, and if I want it to be the visit card, let's say like a window for what can be the future of humanity, uh, I have to be very careful uh, in accepting the, all the technology and how how do do we uh, accept that technology in the city? I'm not alone. Of course, I have engineers, architects, econo- economists, and all, a, a bunch of people around me uh, that advise me. Uh, but uh, uh, this is my vision. I, I want to to build this city to be a visit card for what we can be to not forget that we are humans, okay? Because if we forget that, if we forget that humanity is at risk, one of these days we are going to be surpassed by robots. And I think that uh, uh, this cannot happen. This cannot happen. So that's why my, I, I stuck at my project very deeply. Great. And, and you know, those are great comments. Uh, uh, a- a- Antonio, I don't know if you wanted to add any of that. And uh, for our audience members, uh, if you wanted to either ask a question in the chat or try to grab the mic, 
uh, you can also do that. But uh, Antonio, uh, no, just, a, a lot of information has been shared. So <laughs> final final comment. Uh, I, I I fully agree with all of you. Uh, I think we are aligned. So I think we need to to conclude. We need to update the famous uh, social contract written by Rousseau, the French philosopher, and we need to make another Rousseauian uh, contract, but adding, adding uh, technology and new rules to make cities sustainable and more inclusive. We cannot really uh, exclude uh, technology uh, and also technology, the access to technology for everybody, for all the people, uh, because it's the way to, to, to make it, to, to make societies inclusive. So we need, but we need to update that social contract, uh, because it's not only uh, about technology. Unfortunately, it's technology, regulations, visions, uh, and also the combination of, of these, uh, uh, you know, the, the public and, and private institutions, uh, um, and, and, and many all, uh, many other entities moving forward in the same direction, make, uh, you know, cities and the world inclusive. Otherwise, we're going to regret it. Uh, so in the few minutes left, un unfortunately, we live in a world of sound, sound bites and bullets. Uh, but uh, that, that, so what I want to do is ask each of you to give a sound bite that if there's one thing that someone could take away from the session that, uh, you know, you would want people to remember. I mean, all, all three of you have talked about, you know, the importance of humanity, women, integration, but as a closing comment, what would be uh, uh, the, the most important thing, you, you know? And Marinella, let me start with you. The, what's the, I know you've got a lot of important ideas, but what's the one important thing you want someone to take away from this session that you'd want? Yeah, to I think the most important is that, uh, do we want to live, first of all, in which planet do we want to live? Do we want to live in a clean planet? First, we have to respect the planet. So if we don't respect the planet and the planet is at risk, uh, we don't have any future, okay? So it's no use to talk about technology or to talk about anything if we cannot live uh, in the planet. Uh, sometimes I say it's, uh, it's uh, like almost comic that people are trying to go to, to the moon or to Mars or to try to live in another planet when they did not respect this one. So they are going to do the same mess uh, uh, in, in another planet I think we should think about the planet. So my last uh, thought is for future, respecting the planet and humanity. Stay humans. Please don't let artificial intelligence uh, surpass you. So that's why I work for the future of humanity. That, 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 and that's a great thought, which is uh, we live right here. <laughs> and we, we, we better make sure it's livable. A Antonio, what, what's the one thing you would want uh, people to take away from this session? That uh... Yeah, probably we should, we should start out talking about wise cities. Uh, and, and that means, uh, you know, inclusion, tangible prosperity for people, uh, you know, reducing the disparity of wealth and many other things. Smart cities, maybe at some point, is only about, yeah, tech companies, uh, you know, uh, carriers, operators, and it's only about business. And we all know that if it's only about business and profitability, so it's, you know, I think it's going to be difficult to see inclusivity, respect for the human rights, uh, sustainability, uh, respect for the environment, etc. So, wise cities, not smart cities. Great. And then, uh, Sergio, you've got the last word. What's the uh, one thing you want people to remember from this session that they should grab onto and hold onto uh, as they think about the future? When you think about the future in the context of what we our, our panel session is talking about, is right. We're talking about five G, and to me, five G is just an opportunity to look at what that evolution is, is, is that, that is happening in, in, in what we call smart cities, right? But also a uh, big believer that when you're looking at smart cities, you can't forget the people as both our other panelists have mentioned, you know, be, building people-centered smart cities from the ground up, right? Really looking at, you know, 5G is so far removed when 50% of the world is still not connected, 
right? So digital technologies have the potential to serve people, to evolve people, to evolve humanity, improve public services and working conditions, living conditions, right? We have an opportunity to really, you know, work on the digital divide and make sure that we leave no one behind. The digital revolution is an opportunity to really create wealth and education and opportunity for everyone around the planet. So I think 5G is really, um, it, it's just a catalyst, but not the be all. Yeah. And I think we should be focused on, on the entire, you know, again, a huge fan of public private partnerships, but also people centric partnerships. And with that, uh, I'd like to thank all of you for sharing your expertise. Uh, uh, like all our presentations, these are uh, shared on YouTube uh, for the global community. And I think all of them uh, will uh, learn a lot by uh, watching this video. Again, thank you very much for your time and volunteering for a great effort. Thank you, then. Bye. Thank you.